This is Caribbean News Desk. I'm Dennis Chabral. In today's edition, a crude oil-laden tanker that came from West Africa is getting a tough time offloading in Trinidad due to Ebola affairs. Political parties in Guyana may not be too keen on campaign financing. We hear from an election commissioner. Guyana may have won a blacklisting reprieve from the Global Financial Crimes Watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force. A top official of Spain says populism, inequality and a lack of public confidence are having a toll on democracy. Details coming up. Fearing the deadly Ebola virus, workers at Trinidad and Tobago state-owned oil company Petrotrin were up to late Tuesday resisting efforts to berth an oil tanker that arrived there. The tanker overseas Yellowstone arrived at Point Pier last Thursday, but since then has been unable to offload its consignment of imported crude oil to operate the refinery. Petrotrin has said that if the ship is not allowed to berth and deliver its cargo, the Twin Island Republic will soon have to go without electricity and fuel. The ship arrived from Gabon and transited other countries before arriving in Trinidad and Tobago. Gabon is not affected by Ebola, but borders Guinea, one of the countries where many have succumbed to the virus. Although Trinidad and Tobago authorities have cleared the ship's crew of the disease, the Oil Field Workers Trade Union, or OWTU, is adamant that its workers are being put at risk. OWTU leader Ansel Roger was reported in Trinidad and Tobago's Power 102 FMS saying that Petrotrin has used an archaic means of certifying the ship's crew and that does not cater for the deadly disease. But the company is relying on an age-old procedure, a procedure that does not take into account the threat of a deadly Ebola virus. And so what the level of clearance that they would have given to the crew to boat that ship for our uh, workers, our employees, our members, to put themselves in harm's way is a health certificate. The workers who exercise their rights under Section 15 of the Occupational uh, Safety and Health Act, and we are saying until and unless those things are put in place, the workers are correct to exercise their rights in law to withhold their labor to place themselves in harm's way. Concerns have been raised about the whereabouts of six crew members of the overseas Yellowstone oil tanker. They have been taken off the vessel. Jamaica says it is treading cautiously in decriminalizing marijuana for medicinal use. The issue was raised by journalists at the just-concluded Caribbean Week of Agriculture held in Suriname. While that week focused on the importance of family farming, no discussion was held about the shifting of small-scale farmers from bananas and all the crops to marijuana. Jamaica's Agriculture Minister Derek Kellyer told reporters that legalizing marijuana for medicinal use will become a reality only after there is adequate public awareness as well as the crossing of international legal hurdles. Just to this point in that time, marijuana is a, considered an illegal substance. Until all the protocols surrounding um, how we go about dealing with the industry, the different steps that we have to take, until we have that um, properly, that information properly disseminated to the people so they have an understanding of how the industry is going to work on a legal footing, then we can't move. We can't move forward until we clear those hurdles. Because of the fact, as I said before, we have to respect the conventions that we have signed. Mr. Kellyer says countries that stand to benefit economically from marijuana production are among those in the Caribbean. He added that his country's Minister of Legal Affairs has been drafting legislation that will no longer see persons being prosecuted for being in possession of marijuana cigarettes, popularly called spliffs. There has been a growing tolerance for marijuana in the U.S. and Canada, as well as parts of Europe. Guyana's political parties do not appear to be serious about campaign financing. At least, that's the view of one of the commissioners of the Guyana Elections Commission. Mr. Charles Corbyn has been attending meetings on a thorny subject that have been held by the Organization of American States and other entities. He says that based on what he has been hearing from representatives of political parties, none of them is interested in revealing who is financing their election campaigns. The feedback that I got suggested that many of the current contributors to campaigns would prefer not to make known their 
allegiance affiliation to and would prefer to see a good process but would not necessarily want to identify. There are some contributors, we are told, who contribute to both sides equally. They want to see a good process. There are other contributors uh, reported who probably want to see maybe a particular change in a, partic in a particular area but don't want necessarily to be identified by company or by person. OAS election observer missions have repeatedly recommended that strict laws and regulations be put in place to address campaign financing. The opposition in the past has raised concerns about the government's alleged abuse of state resources in electioneering. Guyana appears to have won yet another reprieve from global blacklisting by the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF, for, for failure to pass amendments to its five-year-old financial crimes law. The opposition controlled the National Assembly has refused to pass the amendments that have been recommended by the Trinidad-based Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, or CFATF. Despite public and private calls by the Organization of American States, CARICOM, and most recently the Caribbean Association of Bankers, the opposition has refused to budge. The opposition wants the law to be tightened and to insulate the Financial Intelligence Unit from political influence. Already the, C already the CFATF has advised financial institutions to be wary of transactions with Guyana. Attorney General Alan Landelau traveled to France where he delivered a letter of commitment from President Donald Rambatar to the FATF's International Cooperation Review Group. Mr. Landelau stresses that the letter is government's commitment to implement the anti-money laundering and countering financing terrorism regime. He is somewhat optimistic that the letter again staves off the possibility of Guyana being blacklisted by the FATF. This letter of commitment uh, delays the prospects of being blacklisted by the FATF? Well, it, it demonstrates a commitment from the government. There are many, most of the countries that have been blacklisted is where the government is recalcitrant. We have the unique situation here where the government is committed, but the, the parliament is unwilling. It's a very unique situation that has never confronted the, um, the FATF before, and the CATF, CFATF. And they made it very clear they are, de they, are, are, they, are in, they are dealing with a completely new scenario. So in essence, we have gotten countries, somewhat of a reprieve. Like, countries like Iran and North Korea and so on are where the governments have refused to, to, co co to co cooperate. You understand? So we have gotten somewhat of a reprieve. I, I, I think, I think, I think from my observation of what has transpired so far, I believe that um, we, we would have gotten some reprieve by the fact that the government is demonstrating. Right? And um, the, the European Union, Mexico, and, and uh, a few other of the countries have spoken to that. The AARG gave us a good recommendation because we cooperated fully with the process. All right. And they, rec they recognize that the deficiencies are beyond the competence of the government to correct. AG, thank you very much. You're listening to Caribbean News Desk. The U.S. government announced Tuesday that all passengers arriving by a plane whose trip originated in Liberia, Sierra Leone, or Guinea will have to enter the country through the five airports that have special controls to place in place to detect the Ebola virus. The Homeland Security Department announced the restriction in a statement which will enter into force on Wednesday and is the aim of which is to prevent the spread of Ebola in the U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Johnson noted in the communique that the five airports, New York's JFK, the Newark Airport, Washington, Chicago, and Atlanta, have strengthened security with measures that include taking the temperature of passengers coming from West Africa. About 94% of the travelers who come to the U.S. from Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea enter the country through these five airports, the Department of Homeland Security added. But currently, there are no direct flights from any of these countries to the U.S. He also said that the DHS is continually evaluating whether additional controls or restrictions may be necessary to protect the U.S. public. 
Spain's Secretary of State for International Cooperation for Iberia-America, Jesus Garcia, warned on Tuesday that the main threats facing Latin American democracies are populism, inequality, and a lack of public confidence. Garcia made his remarks safe. Gracia made his remarks in Cartagena, Colombia, at the opening of a forum on democratic governability in Latin America organized by Spain's International Development Agency on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. He said that now the governments are not what they were because power is more divided and it's more difficult to create majorities and agreements. Therefore, Gracia defended pol politics as the basis for the building and strengthening of democracies. He also cited inequality as a challenge for international cooperation, saying that it's a matter that concerns us all, a great universal problem. He also spoke of the lack of security as something that will have to be worked on in the future to provide equality of democracy. You've been listening to Caribbean News Desk. You can visit us online at carabnewsdesk.com or facebook.com forward slash carabnewsdesk or twitter.com forward slash carabnewsdesk. We're also on WhatsApp on 592-622-6762. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dennis Chabrol.